Hola, everybody. This is Jael Depardo, and welcome to the Latin Dish. How's everybody doing here? Good, Hello. great. And who are we here with today? Hi, I'm Susana Ballesteros. Hola, me llamo Lorena Jorge. Welcome. Hi, guys. I'm Paloma Rodriguez. Hello, ladies. Hi. How's everybody? Good. Awesome. 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 So, today I want to talk about celebrities and whether or not they are role models. Oh. Now, I'm sure you guys are familiar with Maluma. Ow, yes, yes. Maluma, yes. baby. <laughs> <laughs> Put on some tunes. Let me watch those music videos oh, where's all that? day. Yeah, Maluma. <laughs> what, what? Let me hear more about that reaction. Yeah, I mean, he's he's hot, right, ladies? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, totally. he's hot. He's talented. <laughs> he's beautiful. He's from Colombia, so he's Latino. We all love Latinos. Yep. And he's, you know, at the end of the day, like, talent is just... Yum. Sexy. Yeah. <laughs> right. But then what, what we want to talk about right now is whether or not Maluma is actually a role model. Right. So, you know, I want to start off by saying that I'm from Colombia. And, you know, I have a personal take on this because growing up and being from Colombia, you know, people have always known my country for, you know, narco trafficking. Yeah. Right. And, you know, the truth of the matter is that it's a country that really didn't have a lot of opportunity for a very, very long time. Mm -hmm. And over the last 25 years, it's really developed like rapidly. And, you know, someone like Maluma, I feel like he's put the country on the map for something other than drugs. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, you know, for example, he just did a song with Madonna. And I remember that there was this video that came out uh, when the song first aired on the radio and it was him sitting in the car listening to the song when it first aired and he was he was in tears oh, but yeah. I, but it wasn't it was he wasn't in tears because it was this huge moment just for him he was in tears because he felt that it was like a big thing for our country yeah. Like, like our country had finally like come out of, uh, you know, and moved forward for something different. But I'm torn because, OK, yeah, he he made Colombia famous for something other than narcos. And he's so hot. And he, he's like the key songs are really, really like oh, pegadiza. So like you want to yeah. dance them all the time. Yeah. But, you know, but the, the videos and everything and the and, and well, and the, and the lyrics of the songs, mm -hmm. They are not for this time. They're like now we're all about women and women em empowerment. Right. And he's singing about like all oh, like he's like, for example, on this day video, Mala Mia, he's on the bed with like 17 women. Oh. And even the beginning of the video clip is like is his own life. And his publicist knocks on the door and then he opens it. Oh, we have a concert. Yeah. And then the song starts. <laughs> but it's like, <laughs> like it's like he... And it's all about like women. It's like very like womanizing, uh -huh. right? Yeah. It's like a, it's I mean, very macho. Susana, I I, I I agree to the to the video as far as but but I feel like we take things so literal sometimes that it it unfortunately makes us not not really just question things like it's 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 a video take it for what it is it's a video and i actually know what you're talking about with malamia and malamia the message although the video probably says something different you know but it still kind of goes hand in hand with the message which is like i'm going to live my life my way regardless of what and you can judge me for it but at the end of the day is my choice and it's my life so i'm the only one that can at the end of the day make that decision and I think as as how she has Jael had said you know role model maybe not so much if you take in the lyrics because you know Felice Los Cuatro also <laughs> right. for those of you that don't know what it means Felice Los Cuatro is, it's all we're all happy the four of us Oh wow. <laughs> we're going to share each other we're going to be Wowza. aware of it we're going to make the room bigger and we're just going to be one happy family <laughs> and it is kind of polygamous you know right. and it is in encouraging that but why are we taking things so like enjoy the music take it for what it affects you and how you want it and you know not necessarily put him at such a high pedestal as a role model yeah like, that's a huge thing like like you said, Lorena, the pedestal thing gets gets to me. And I've heard a lot of celebrities always mention in, in interviews, like, I don't want people to put me on a pedestal, but we always do. And celebrities, are they role models? I 
I would say no. I mean, I'd hope not. I mean, I don't have kids and I, I don't know if I ever will, but I always think of my little cousin who was like, I think she was like five when Britney, Britney Spears was like at the height of her career. Mm. Like when Slay For You came out, she was like all oily and like sweaty <laughs> in that music video. And then at the time too, Shakira was huge and she loved both. And I remember watching her as a kid, uh, watching her when she was a child, like watching Britney, how she like would change her her vibe, like her vibe was just like super, way too sexy for a five-year-old. And then when she would watch Shakira, it was like more peppy and joyful and not mm -hmm. as sexy. And I remember thinking like, wow, celebrities really do and can affect us in a, in a different way. And I remember thinking like, yeah, maybe let's tone down the Britney until you're like, you know, in your teens. And let's just focus on Shakira for a little mm -hmm. bit. I have a question for yeah. you, Paloma, though. Do you not feel that maybe it's the parents that kind of need to come, like, let them be exposed to these things? Because at the end of the day, you're going to be exposed to it. Absolutely. Whether you go, because once you hit high school, once you go to even grammar school, yeah. these kids, kids have phones at eight, seven years right. old. And I'm like, what? Can we go back in time where we had beepers and people <laughs> left voicemails? <laughs> yeah. But um, you can't control nowadays the what people have access to what kids have access to um realistically you know so don't do you feel like maybe it being out there even though it, they do have power that the parent should be more present and maybe just even if they're watching the video like Brittany this is just for show honey this yeah. is not what you're gonna be you know this is she's just entertaining Absolutely. whatever it may be so so, oh, but so it's, it's difficult for a kid to separate like if this is then like wearing like like very like a, almost dancing in lingerie and moving the booty and stuff and it's difficult to like for girls to no don't you don't dance like that because they think that's the the outfit you should wear for dancing. So it's very difficult to separate. And it's true that we put them on that pedestal always. There's it's very difficult not to. And then we we make them be perfect. Like and we criticize them when they are not. And they go, but they are people, so they go into rehab. And then mm -hmm. you criticize them and oh they went into, oh my god and my daughter is a fan. Well, I, I don't know, you know like mm -hmm. yeah. So obviously you know, celebrities have a lot of influence. So, But let's bring it back to Maluma. So what's the verdict? Do you think he is a role model? Yes or no? Not, not definitely not to me. No. I, I think for artists and for people from, you know, like I'm from, you know, my family is from the Dominican Republic. And so being from a third world country and seeing someone within your own geography make it to that caliber, I think he can be very inspiring. I think for artists who feel that, you know what, if he made it, I can make it. So I think he can drive people. I don't know necessarily if I want to live the life that he's living, you know, like a role model. What so, about you, right. Paloma? What do you think? Uh, role model, I'm going to go with no, just because if I did have kids, I'm gonna. I know they'll be exposed to it, Lorena, like you mentioned, and there will be that talk of like, this is not okay <laughs> to listen to this song about four people in a bed. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna go with role model. No, love him. He's amazing. But role model, I'm gonna. I'm gonna have to pass on that one. And for me, again, I have a personal take on it, yeah. and and I agree with what Lorena was saying. Coming from a country that had less opportunity for a very long time, seeing someone who carved a path, it I think helps others feel like they have that path out there for them now. Like it, it's opened a path uh, to some success. It's a framework mm -hmm. that you can follow. But it, you know, it does it does bring up the sub the subject of you know what is the difference between a role model and someone that you just look up to mm. i think yeah. um be, being a role role model the people the person has to agree to be a role model you know like if they, you cannot choose someone and make them just because you admire them or you like what they do to kind of make them be your i don't know it's a tough question um in my case, I mean, I'm, I, I mean, I criticize Maluma for the lyrics, but at the same time, I cannot, I cannot stop listening to them, and right. I, and I follow Maluma on Instagram. I confess, and <laughs> so I, do I. So do I. <laughs> I need to get on the bandwagon. I'm only on YouTube, like looking at his videos and stuff. I need well, to follow him on Instagram. The I guess. pictures are nice to look at. I'm right. not gonna lie. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, so, so so wait. So is it different for someone to be a role model and someone that people just look up to? Absolutely. Yeah. 
Totally. Absolutely. Um, and my take for me, um, Jael, the difference is, you know, do you admire this person for the things that they've been able to accomplish or do you want to live the life that they're leading? You know, I think in comparison, one of the persons that comes up to my, you know, my mind automatically is Michael Jackson. Like I looked up to Michael Jackson in his ability of being so just innovative and kind of transcending and bringing things, what James Brown did, you know, and making it, giving it a new twist and, and kind of revolutionizing music. Um, so I definitely admire him as an artist and I look up to him, but do I see him as a role model? Absolutely not. Like I do I didn't want to live his lifestyle. I didn't want to have that type of fame. And I didn't want to have, you know, all that different controversial, you know, the life that he led. So ultimately, no. Right. Because there are so many celebrities that we can look up to that have done great things, but also have a really checkered past. Yeah. yeah girl. It's totally different. Role model, keep it on one side. I look up to you on the other side for sure. Okay. Thank you, ladies, for your take on that. We are going to throw to a commercial break at the moment. And when we come back, we're going to have a Hollywood PR person here with us who's going to be telling us how role models are created. This is the story of a man. A man who had a dream, and one day, that dream turned into... Yo, what's going on? Dean Edwards got a new show? Yo, what's poppin' is your man Dean Edwards? Guess what? You remember me from Saturday Night Live, you remember me from MTV's Guy Code, but now you're gonna remember me from the Dean Edwards Show on the Digital Podcast Network. I don't listen to a lot of things, but I listen to my man Dean Edwards on the Digital Podcast Network. He got his own show. It's all Dean. It's all love. It's all going down on the Digital Podcast Network. Visit digitalpodcastnetwork.com. Hey, everybody. We're back from commercial break. This is Jael DePardo, and we were all just having a conversation about whether celebrities are role models. And today in the studio, we have Lisa Gold. Lisa Gold is a publicist. And um, how you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me on this really yes. cool show. Yes. By the way, so everyone should know that she's very pretty. Oh. Yes. <laughs> Sparkling blue eyes. Well, yes. And beautiful red hair. This interview is going to go great. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Lisa, thank you for joining us at Latin Dish. And so the ladies and I were talking today about whether or not celebrities are role models. What's your take on that? That is a great question. I think role models are created mm -hmm. and not necessarily organic. Mm -hmm. you, there is a way to model people that you admire, um, presidents, actors, politicians of all sorts, right. um, authors. You can model somebody because you admire what they do. But to be a role model, I think that also has to be kind of a choice of the person to say, okay, since people do admire me, I am going to take this responsibility on mm. and only behave a particular way. Wow. And that's also kind of a created way of keeping eyes on you. Mm -hmm. You know, as a publicist, we work with our clients to have them be received in the best light. Right. Being a role model is a great thing. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there are a lot of celebrities that also, you know, they become advocates. So, so you know, that's also great when you see that. That's what I would call a role model. Absolutely. And it is a responsibility. So if you are going to become or call yourself a role model, then you hold yourself to a different standard. So, Lisa, I'm curious, how far does a real personality deviate from the image? Ooh, that's a good question. Ugh. Well, Very you know, good. here's the thing. <laughs> I, think, <laughs> I think that good people are inherently good mm. and they like to be known as that. And so it's not as difficult to create that. Yeah. But when you're not necessarily, listen, you can be famous for whatever reason or right. infamous sometimes right. mm -hmm. and not be necessarily the best human on the planet. Um, and so there's a lot more creativity where your publicist is concerned. <laughs> I love that word, creativity. It's <laughs> <laughs> a nice way of putting it. Yeah. 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 So there is a gap and it yeah. is a publicist's job to, again, keep you in the public eye with an image of a certain way. I don't think too many publicists 
are out there creating a bad boy image or a bad girl image. Okay. There's yeah. very few if there are. But there are people that actually would stage stuff to do that? Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. I feel like, what, like uh, a bad boy or a bad girl image. Like that, that. Both. That's or even the good about. parts. Even, even the good parts. Even some of the good stuff is staged. You know, we're trying to – so all fame is created. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's less organic than you would think. I mean, as a consumer, you're reading a magazine, you're watching a television show, a entertainment news show, and you think it just happens. Now, there's a machine at work now, behind the scenes. Now, Lisa, yeah. do you feel like you have to censor certain things of as a publicist from, you know, the public eye, for example? Absolutely. There's things that people do that you would never want your audience to know about. Wow. I mean, mm. I would I don't know you ladies that well, but don't you have some stuff that you just <laughs> kind of don't Everybody. want out there in the world? Absolutely. Not telling right. skeletons in the closet. <laughs> right. Maybe, yeah. And some people, you know, with all good intentions make mistakes as well. Right. And we don't have to publicize every mistake we make. Right. Thank God. Now, if you have like word of something of someone's past per se, you know, um do you like spin it? To make it a positive thing or do you just like head on and say this is negative but this is not who that person is anymore or – It like- depends on who this person is and where they are in the public eye. I mean there's some people that you – know, I hate to say A-list, B-list, C-list but right. there mm-hmm. is kind of a hierarchy. There's the really big stars that have been stars for a long time, um, athletes that have been in the public eye for years and years and years even though they're not playing anymore. So there's – Uh, A kind of person that, you know, is a household name. Then there Mm -hmm. are lesser known but still just as vital. And then there's people that are coming up in the world. So, again, the whole you're either coming up or you're going down. And as a publicist, you want to protect the image um, to the best of your ability. That's why you're hired. Because at the end of the day, (laughs) the whole game is to make money. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, that's so true. You know, I, yeah. I have a little story, but I I was an artist. I was a recording artist. I had a record deal, and I had a publicist. And I'm a homebody. I like to chill at home. I'm not really necessarily a party girl. And I remember I had a conversation with her, and she was like, look, when we do the red carpets and we're at the event, you have to stay. And you have to maybe get a cocktail and maybe get on the dance floor and, and dance the whole night because – that image is what's going to make us money. Literally, that's what she said. And yeah. I was like, what? Like, really? Like, that's what that's what we have to do now? It's like, I have to pretend that I drink? She's like, well, you don't have to drink. Let's just do club soda with the lime. I'm like, okay. And, you know, I, I, I realized that day, and it actually did, it, it, pro- it progressed. Like, it got worse. Like, oh, now... This producer is interested in you. So would are you willing to go on a date with him? I go, no. <laughs> <laughs> so I think there are different kinds of publicists. Wow. So uh, you yeah. know what? That's an interesting story, Paloma. And, yeah. it, and it makes me actually wonder, Lisa, have you ever seen a celebrity, a celebrity that it kind of crumbles behind the facade, you know, like, like they're trying to keep up with the Joneses so and the image that they're creating. And, but in the background, it's like, it, it's going against, you know, what they feel or who they are. And, and has like anyone ever come to you and said, Lisa, this is, this is just way too much for me. And it's affecting them in the background. You know, the Hollywood machine is all about making money, yeah. but they're making money off of human beings mm-hmm. instead mm-hmm. of like a widget, That's right? If right. we were to market or publicize a widget, the widget doesn't have feelings. We don't have to deal with that. We just get to say what we say and make it look how we want it to look. When you're dealing with human beings, they do have emotions. They do make mistakes. Mm -hmm. They do have – they're either a homebody or they're a party person. And so it is a relationship between you and your publicity manufacturer to kind of have the conversations of, you know, what's going to work for your career that will make money but also sits right with you. And so, yes, there can be a divergent it, so get a new publicist. Right, exactly. That's <laughs> exactly what happened. Okay. Right. <laughs> oh, it has is to that, be a fit. Oh, so is yeah. that what happened? You ended up having to get a new Yeah, and, and and I went through a couple, and I till this day, like, well, I don't have a publicist now, but when I was doing music, I did. And yeah, I could never really find a fit. I just, I never found someone that was genuinely looking out for Paloma. Well, at the end of the day, I hate to say it, it's not their yeah. job to look out for Paloma. It's 
their job, my job, to look out for how we have Paloma make money. Right. And make and, you successful. A- and also care about our clients. You know, that's that right. fine line of that relationship. Yeah. Now, how do you handle, Lisa, because the, all this conversation kind of brings me up with Cardi, Cardi B, right? Um, give you the example of how vocal she is, right, about her past, about what she's done. And she's come out and said, you know, I've never wanted to be a role model. This is something that is a new platform that has been given to me. I didn't ask for this. And how do you handle a client that kind of comes to you and it's like, I don't want this. What what do you do then? And then also how, for example, if let's say you are kind of trying to work with the person and saying, let's talk about this. How would you kind of spin that? Well, the fact that we're talking about Cardi B Mm -hmm. means that her publicist is doing a good their job. job. Yeah. Right. So at the end of the day, you if if that's her position that I'm going to be vocal and outspoken, then you're going to run you're going to as a publicist run with that and make more of that. Mm. You never really want to take away from that cuz look, it's working. Yeah. yeah. I would never take on a client and try to change them to say, "Oh, I think this is going to work better for you" because I don't know. So you think it's staged? Mm. <laughs> It's Isn't exaggerated. It? Life's a stage. <laughs> yes, <laughs> honey. Life is a and stage. And by the way, I, I love this phrase. Perception is reality. Mm. Oh, girl. So, I'm a so right Perception yeah. is reality. Like, you know, you can have a traffic accident and six people see it and then go interview them and you'll have six different points of view. Yes. So, you know, basically we're just trying to manage the traffic accident here. <laughs> right. You know, uh, when we promote people, there's so many variables that can happen. Things that they say, things that they wear. And by the way, publicity is not just uh, the conversation. It is it is what they wear. So usually um, actors or celebrities will have a stylist because clothing you know, right. it speaks. speaks. And then where you go and who you hang out with exactly. speaks. And not only, you know, do you, does the celebrity speak, but sometimes the publicist speaks for them. Mm-hmm. And they can say something that the individual they represent cannot say. So it's like third party authority or, you know, they didn't mean that and here's what happened. And so it's all, like I said, all fame is created. What we read in People magazine or what we see on those shows you know, we'd like to think it's organic and it just happened and somebody happened to take the picture. Oh, yeah. no, 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 no. Some of these celebrities even call the paparazzi, have arrangements My and deals, goodness. which, you know, wow. if you're especially if you're coming up yeah. in the world, the publicist's job as well as the celebrity's job is like, how do we get eyes on it? And we reach out to those people to say, hey, I'm going to be in Ralph's supermarket. And or just, even like you know, fake like a relationship. Send the paparazzi. Uh, <laughs> you know, I'm curious, what's your philosophy on, you know, the idea that all publicity is good publicity. Well, that phrase is out there for a reason because they yeah. say if somebody's talking about you, you know, that's irrelevant. You know, well, people, you want to be talked about, right? All the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, you want to be talked about. You want to be talked about well. Um, and there's some things that people have said one time and now these days, things that they said 20 years ago that comes back to right? haunt them. We are living in a very yeah. interesting oh, time. Sensitive right. time. You can't get away with anything that you did anything. 20 years ago. Yeah. So let's hope you had a good, you know, clean life. But who has? <laughs> right. So how do you deal with those kinds of scandals and skeletons in the closet that, that pop up? Well, they call it spin. Okay. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, you know... A really good marketer, a really good publicist puts themselves in the position of the listener, the observer, and it's like, what could we say? What could we have this person do that will be well-received over there? Like, I'm always putting Mm -hmm. myself in the listener's shoes. I'm always putting myself over there in the receiver's Um, It's not just what I want you to believe. It's what do you – what do you want them to believe? Got it. Yeah. So, you know, it's it's a it's uh spinning a lot of plates. That's why there's good publicists and bad publicists. <laughs> right. Mm. Yeah. So. I have a feeling you're a good publicist. Oh, thank you. And yes. if I was your publicist back in the day, we would have had a different conversation. Oh, girl, I love you already. So, Lisa, tell me what you do specifically, you know, like for clients. And like I want to know like what kind of clients you have. I mean, throw some names. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not going to throw any names, okay. but here's what I do. So, the world is online. Okay. Right. People are yeah. listening to this podcast 
you know, on their phone or on their computer or, you know, we consume entertainment differently and we consume information differently. It's all on the Internet. So I am a digital publicist. So oh. the Publicity Network primarily is uh, a placement on interview shows like this. Uh, we also do press releases to, you know, hundreds of thousands of media outlets, digitally, wow. online services. Yeah. Um, my job is basically to take anyone who's an expert in a particular area or has a program or a product or they're a coach. They want to make an impact in the world. Yeah. So what I, who I work with specifically now are those people who really just have a passion and want to make a difference. And then I place them on uh, appropriate, uh, targeted podcast generally. And we also help create and craft their message in a way that is well received by their intended target market, if not to get too technical. You know, if you ha were a chef and wanted to share all about cooking and you have a vegan cookbook and, you know, I wouldn't put you on a <laughs> podcast for the American Cattle Association. Right, right, right. Like, That wouldn't work, right? So, yeah. so we, uh, I pitch you to the shows that uh, have the listeners that are going to be right there in your marketplace that want to hear what you have to say, that are inspired by, by what the conversation is and the content is, and then take action um, when you invite Invite them to do something. Come to your show. Come to nice. your yeah. program. Buy your book. And uh, we have great success in um, – because also what I do is I do it repetitively. Mm -hmm. You know, if you watch a commercial on television, they didn't spend all that money, all that time, all that effort to air it once. Exactly. You see it over and over and over again. I heard something that someone has to see something seven times in order for it to click. Yeah. We are flooded yeah, by content. Right. There's so much clutter out there. And, you know, in one way, it's great that we have so many options and choices, but as a consumer and a, and a buyer, it's tough. How do we reach our audience when mm -hmm. there are so many options? How do we clear through that clutter? So repetition, I get my clients um, as regular guests on particular shows over and over again so yeah. that um, if you hear them the first time, you go, oh, that's interesting. And maybe the second time and third time, you will take action. The other thing that I love about podcasts is that it's evergreen. So mm -hmm. you can do an interview that stays on the internet and two years later find an audience. And people wow, generally go yeah. back and then they binge. You know how like everybody binges yeah. now? Of course. It's just like, wow, totally. that is so cool. I want to hear every guest on that podcast. That's so true. So yeah, you can reach people forever. It's it's the coolest way. And then of course the press releases are crafted. That's where I come in with, again, um, writing mm -hmm. the content that matches the message and getting it to the right media outlets. There's no, you know, I find it to be one of the most creative things I've ever done. I come yeah, from a performing like a background. Fun. Myself so awesome. and all of that, but you know, I, I just love it. It is so creative to try something and then go, "Wow, that worked!" Yes, and and I somebody did something because I created something. I I, I know that sounds very general, but it's a yeah. lot of fun. Yeah, it sounds like the perfect job. Okay, Lisa. So I have a burning question as an artist myself. When is the like the perfect time that you would say? to reach out to a publicist, to actually have a publicist, to reach out to you or to reach out to any other publicist per se? It depends. I know that's not the answer you wanted. But, <laughs> you know, that's a cry. At the end of the day, when you have something to promote, I know a lot of uh, particularly actors or mm -hmm. artists say, oh, well, I'll hire a publicist and then they'll get me on this and this and this and then people will – Something magical will happen. Oh, right? okay. Well, that's not how publicity works. You need to have a program, a product, a service to promote mm. from which then publicity will make a difference. And again, it's all financial. So if I do my job and I get you uh, lots of listeners, lots of observers, that's only so that I have you get lots of buyers and customers. Right. Got so it. basically, yeah. if someone has like a new song or a book coming out, a movie, a TV show, something like that. Exactly. You are promoting something. So all these celebrities, for example, that go on television shows, mm -hmm. um, they're not there because they get paid scale. They're not there for fun. They're there for, you know, to advertise and publicize. And yeah. their publicists get them on the show. It's not like the show is calling around going, who can I get on my show? Yeah. Publicists are pitching their people because the their movie's coming out or right. their uh, book is coming out. So it is, um, it's not dog eat dog. Yeah. You know, it's not a dog eat dog world. Yeah. But it is competitive. 
It's competitive. Got it. yeah. It's all about timing. Lisa Gold, everybody. Thank you so much for visiting us here at the studio today, A Latin Dish. And thanks to everybody for listening in and joining us today on The Latin Dish. We'll see you next time. Thank you.